All right, we're going to start the webinar today, Passion for Performance. Uh, and we're going to start it realistically in about five minutes. It's five minutes before noon. Hang in there. A couple things to think about before we get started. Number one, hey, what is your potential, do you think, in this great game of recruiting that we're in? If you're a manager, what's your, what's your management potential? How, build you, how big do you want to build your office? If you're an individual biller or do both, how much do you want to build? And then my second question to follow up on that before the webinar is, what are you willing to do to get there? Okay, be back in five minutes. Hang in there. Okay, we got three minutes before we get started on passion for performance, how to get quantum leaps in performance through recruiting analytics or any type of analytics, actually, depending on what you wanted to perform at. But we're going to jump on that in just a couple minutes. Hang in there. All right, we got 60 seconds before we start in on passion for performance. This is John Bartos. The two questions I asked five minutes ago was this. Number one, before we get started, what is your performance potential, do you think, in this great game of recruiting? 
how much as a manager do you want to do and can do? Number two, if you're an individual biller, what is your performance potential? And then the last question is, what are you willing to do to get there? The number three question is a lot more important than number one and two. We'll be back in about 35 seconds, guys. We'll get rock and rolling. Okay, talk to you shortly. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to passion, perf to, to passion for Performance, How to Get Quantum Leaps and Performance Through Analytics. Now, a couple things for the webinar. I'm John Bartos, by the way, uh, founder of the RPM Dashboard since 2008, the uh, internationally uh, most popular recruiting analytics package uh, all over the world. But what I want to chat with you guys about is you guys have questions or anything like that, go to the Q&A session uh, section and answer, you know, just ask me the question and I'll try to answer that as we go on. If you can, hold the questions off till the end and then we can address any question that you guys may have, concerns, anything, so we can help you address what is going on. And um, today we're gonna jump on a couple different things. One is we're gonna talk about analytics, the importance of analytics and what it can do for you as a manager, as an individual biller, Analytics and almost anything are very, very important. We'll also talk about the big billers and the big offices and what they're paying attention to and what are the biggest bang for your buck in terms of you're spending money on something and you want to see some results on, an, on a billings perspective or profitability, what do you spend your money on? So we're going to talk about all those things. And I, I hope I can instill in everyone here today a couple things. One, I want, to, I want you to have your mind open about things we're going to talk about. I, I know there's we've lived through situations, we've had crazy experiences in this industry. And what I wanna do is make sure that everybody understands that uh, you know things can change no matter where you are currently and depending on where you wanna go and what you're willing to do in order to get there. You can make almost anything happen in this industry. I've seen the highs of the highs, for me personally, seen the lows of the lows. And uh, this is one of the only games in town, the executive search recruiting, where you can change your life almost within 90 days just by doing the things that are right. The questions I ask you guys beginning with is, uh, what, what is your per performance potential? What is it you think in, in the recruiting industry or even running an office or managing an office? And it always blows my mind. You know, After the Winter Olympics we had, it was over 50 world records that were broken. Did you guys see that? Every single time people get together and compete and it's not because they got new aluminum bats and they only use wood or whatever the technology breakthrough was. It's not about that. But the human potential, your potential, is unlimited. You can achieve unbelievable things if you just focus on the right things and not keep doing the same damn thing over and over and over again and more of it and expecting a different result. I mean, you guys know what that means from a Chinese proverb perspective. So if you focus on the right things that are going to net you the results you need to, you don't have to work harder. You don't have to work more. You can work significantly less. Tim Ferriss came out with a four hour work week and it kind of blew everybody away a few years ago because the whole book was about how can I do my normal 40 hour, 50 hour work week in four hours for the whole work week. And believe it or not, I believe them. You can. You can absolutely do that. Right now, today, guys, I'm still considered one of the biggest billers in the industry. And I, I probably spend less than an uh, hour on the phone myself. So how do I do that? How does somebody bill well over a million dollars a year and spend less than an hour of time on the phone? I want, you to, I want you to think about that. How does somebody do that? Well, I tell you how they do it. They focus on the right things and don't do the things that necessarily don't need to be done. And so today we're going to talk about that passion for performance, how to get quantum leaps in your performance through analytics and really understanding the game and working on the right things at your office, working on the right things in your office to see those kind of results you need to see and the right things for individual billers. So you can see monster increases in billings and achieve some of the 
goals in life you have have to uh, have to achieve. Oh, somebody just mentioned this to me and just asked. It says, John, where you been? Uh, and since 2014, I, I stopped doing all speeches. So from, from 2004 to 2014, I was at NAPS and you know top echelon and all the events going on, speaking in companies. And in 2014, I decided to stop. And I had a lot of things in life I wanted to get done anyways, and which I which I did. But I really didn't feel that the industry was offering any information that was any different than they offered you 40 years ago. You know, make more calls, you know, do better marketing calls, plan better, use technology. Well, that wasn't 40 years ago, obviously. Uh, use LinkedIn, use Owler, you know. So, so going through and talking to the different folks out there, um, I didn't see value for, for me and to keep doing the same old thing over and over and over again. So I started researching. And most of my time was spent researching the top offices and top billers in the world. And I researched the top 63 billers to see what they're doing differently, to see if I can find the magic, if, it will, if you will. What's the secret sauce? What are the cool kids doing that I, <laughs> I need to be doing because I'm not doing them right now? And the interesting thing of studying the top billers in the Pinnacle Association, as well as all over the world who aren't in the Pinnacle Association, um, there was commonalities, some huge commonalities among those. Then I started studying the top offices and took a, let's go over the top 1% billers. Do you guys realize that the top 1% billers in this industry will produce as much as 10 times more than the next 10% or the next 11% or whatever you want to call it? Uh, so the top 1% top one will produce as much as 10 times more than the top 10% excluding that top 1%. How in the world are they doing that? So when I started looking at this, I started seeing heavy, heavy trends on what was actually happening and actually what was actually going on. I'm going to jump on your questions here just a little bit so we can get rock and rolling. Um, and then I started looking at what are they doing well, what are they not doing well to see commonalities. And virtually I looked at it from a mathematical perspective or an analytical perspective. Okay, so what are the analytics that they're doing? What are the ratios changing? Uh, what are they doing to net them the kind of results that they're seeing? They're not working harder. They're not working 24 hours a day. What I really found out was the top 1% billers are working significantly less than most of the industry. Matter of fact, it's almost embarrassing how, how less they are working. So, so let me ask you, how do they do that? How can they see 10 times more billings than the average top 10%? and work significantly less? And the answer is all in the analytics. And if you really study ratios and what's going on. I love the quote, by the way, uh, without data, you're blind and deaf in the middle of the freeway. Jeffrey Moore, author of Crossing the Chasm. Um, but it's true. If you're an individual biller or you're an office owner right now, if you don't have all the data on what's going on, you are blind, deaf, and dumb trying to run your firm or your desk. That's all there is to it, because you don't know what you don't know. When somebody comes to me and says, John, I need help. And I say, what seems to be the problem? And they'll tell me some lame blank thing that they think is wrong, but I can always validate that it's probably not wrong because I'll, I'll take a look at their analytics and I'll give them the real problem because I'll tell you what the real problem is once I see the numbers. And that's what analytics can do for you. Once you have the data, you are awoken. You can now understand where you are exactly on the map. I'm in the middle of nowhere, about 20 minutes from Toledo. You know that. Without analytics, you have no clue where you are. You can only guess, and most of the time you'll guess wrong on what's going on. So what do management do then? What do managers do in an environment with no data or limited data, like they only track activities? They manage by beating the dogs you know let's go hush let's go faster come on let's, let's whip the dogs harder let's work harder let's do more hours let's come in early let's leave later and they start managing people by activities where they don't have the data and what happens in an environment from an analytics perspective and there's there's two types of stress one is distress which isn't good you know you're uh, a middle of the ocean in a dinghy and it has a leak and it's quickly falling it's, it's quickly filling up with water that's distress. That's absolutely distress. What the idea is, once you start managing people by other things other than activity levels, because hopefully they'll have critical mass and see activity, then you start seeing what they call eustress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S. -E -S -S. And what that means, it's a positive stress. It's like you're ready to compete uh, in high school or college and you're at the starting line. That's a stress, but it's a great stress. 
So the idea from a management perspective or individual billing perspective is you want to move the stress from being stressed out, distressful, to you stressed and excited, a stress that you need to use to help you reach your potential. So most managers and individuals just focus only on increase, increasing activity. And that's what bothered me about the whole industry for the last 10 years. If you want to do 10% more, do 10% more activity. If you want to do 20% more, do 20% more activity. Well, you know, what if I want to work one day a week, bill a million dollars, and take four days off to work on saving the homeless, feeding the hungry? What if I wanted to help cure the freaking drug problem going on all over the place? I can't be working 12 hours a day and help that situation, can I? Well, that's where the whole four-hour work week concept comes in. By using analytics, you can change certainly time on the time you need to do the things that you need to do. So before we get into this quickly, I'm going to jump on a couple things, some principles, baseline principles we kind of really need to understand. First one is to measure any analytics. I don't care if you're playing professional baseball, football, if you're a nurse, doctor, president of the United States, there's three things that need to be measured. There's activities, which tell you how much volume I'm doing, how many meetings did I have today, how many send outs did I have today, how many marketing calls did I make, how many conversations did I have. Results is the actual results of the activity. I had uh, five marketing presentations and I got one search assignment job order. Great, that's a five to one ratio. But that result, the job order is from the activities. So there's activities, there's results, and I kind of mentioned it already, the ratios and everything tell you how good you are at what you do. Now, if you understand the difference, activities are just pure volume, more volume, more volume, the beatings will continue to morale improves. Results are the results of your activities, but the ratios tell you how good you are at every activity. And when they point at a skill set, simple to make a change because you know there's a problem. Houston, there's a problem. Now we need to make a change if a ratio was out of whack. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Now, in anything, okay, so let's say we're going to China, 747 airline. We're at the Houston Interna Continental International Airport, whatever it's called down there. And we're going to China. It's full of Chinamen and you. Everybody's got two bags, 747, we're at the end of the runway. In order for the plane, to get off the runway, as you can imagine, you think uh, the pilot can go at half speed? <laughs> Heck no. What happens is the pilot, because the plane is full and it's gotta have critical mass, that's the principle of critical mass, the point of critical mass is where the plane is actually taking off the ground based on the weight, uh, lift, you know, thrust, all of that stuff. But the principle of critical mass in recruiting is the same thing. You will not be successful in this business until you hit critical mass. And successful can be defined by your own personal means. But if I have somebody new coming and joining one of my organizations, today I'm going to say, I need you to hit critical mass. I need you to hit volume. I know your ratios aren't going to be that great because you don't know the recruiting industry that well. But at least for me to help you be successful or the chance for me to have you have a chance to be successful, I need you to hit volume. I need you to see volume. You hear me, I'm, I'm saying this to a newbie. There's only two times I talk about critical mass with an employee. One is when they're brand new, because I need them to hit it for them to be successful. The second time is when I have a tenured individual that stopped all activity and they lost some accounts. Then we gotta go back to the drawing board and hit critical mass again, which just means you start all over again. But that's a principle of critical mass, is you won't have an opportunity to lift off, get in the air, unless you hit enough volume or speed. And that's a principle of critical mass in anything. It's riding a bike. It's riding a bike no-handed. There's always a point where you reach that actually where you can get off the ground and actually get a chance to be successful. Now, the principle of incremental increase says this. If I increase my volume once I hit critical mass, because all bets are off if you don't, but once I hit critical mass, if I increase my volume by 10%, I'll probably see a 10% return on the end. If I increase my volume by 25%, I'll probably increase my revenue, billings, whatever you wanna call it, by 25%, or marketing calls, or marketing presence, whatever it is. And that's the principle of incremental increase. Whatever I give in, I typically will give up, give out, or get back up to a point. And here's the point. There's that one point where the incremental principle does not work. 
And that's when quality starts to degrade. So for instance, if I work 12 hours a day and I bill 400K, if I work 24 hours a day, do you think I'll, I'll bill 800K? The answer is, hell no, I won't. Because at some point in time, your quality degrades and you're not getting a one-to-one -one ratio back. Matter of fact, it could be a one to negative one ratio, which you get zero back from every more hour you spend. There, there was a great research study that was done on how effective people can be and what's the perfect time that they can work. And uh, it's, you guys, uh, I'll try to get the research uh, name for you, but it's incredible. It says that somebody needs to work about 50 minutes and they need to take 17 minutes off in an eight hour day. So every 67 minutes, you're only working 50 and you're taking a, almost a 20 minute break, but it's actually a 17 minute break. That will keep the people, or employees, if you will, working the most pr productive. So that just tells you right there, at some point in time, the principle of incremental increase does not work. Now there's critical success factors in everything. Obviously in recruiting, we need it to be great at research, uh, recruiting calls, marketing calls, planning, use of big biller, uh, PC recruiter, whatever, whatever ATS we're using, and we got to have great communication skills, selling skills. All those are critical success factors. Know that. But also you have the principle of quantum leap theorems, which are simply mainly, not always, mainly ratios. So what the principle of quantum leap theorem says is this. It says, without working any harder, you'll have an opportunity to see huge increases, monster increases in results. And that's called a quantum leap. And there's certain things you need to focus on that lend themselves to quantum leaps. In recruiting, there's about seven things that can lend itself to a quantum leap in billings by doing these things appropriately. And in say, instead of saying quantum leap in billings, let's say a quantum leap in effectiveness at that specific thing, because you add several of those together, it, it's, uh, it's almost a night and day difference about getting better at some of the things that you do. But there's quantum leap theory, theorems in everything. In school teachers, if uh, you were with me yesterday in the webinar, you know, one of the main things about school teachers, there's a lot of things that are important, critical success factors, time in school, quality material. You know, what's the culture within a school? Do they eat the proper breakfast and lunch? The number one thing that'll give them an eight times increase in effectiveness of teachers is the quality of teacher themselves. Um, if you take a look at professional golfers, uh, it's not how good they are at driving and long irons, short irons, chipping, putting, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's putts game per round, which is a combination of short game and putting. In almost everything you look at, activity, sport, um, profession, there's certain quantum leap theories that if you get better at those specific things, your success multiplies without working a second longer, a little harder, you just cert certainly have to look at a different skill set. So if you look at quantum leap theorems, they're the key to rapid growth for everybody. Again, once you hit critical mass, because you have to have enough volume to be successful or have a chance to be successful, the real managers focus on, and real, real big billers focus on, their quantum leap theorems. So, so quantum leap is, is, is really a concept from quantum physics. And it's when an atom moves in a per crazy way. They don't even understand how it did that. It moved from one atom to the next and gains a proton. So it's like, defy science. Nobody understands how it was done, but man, it, it made a quantum leap. Uh, and that came from quantum physics. So quantum leap theorems are the specific, uh, they're, they're the specific formulas, if you will, formulas of formulas that actually give you the quantum leaps. And in recruiting, there is seven of those things. We're gonna go over just a second. But it's not about doing the same thing. So, so here's why I need your mindset to change. It's not about doing the same thing you've done yesterday and the day before and last year and year before and try to get another you know, 10 or 20% billings increase or you know, try, try to hire more people and instead of losing one out of, one out of two, I'll lose you know, one out of three. It, it, it's not about that. What this really is about is changing your perception, changing your, your thinking. It's not doing about more and more and more and increasing activity. Um, it's about focusing on the right things, changing a skill set, thinking differently. So a lumberjack, if, if you're a professional lumberjack and you're competing in the steel competitions, you know, steel makes chainsaws and uh, they, they host this lumberjack competition every year. And a normal person with an ax that's sharp, so we're not talking about sharpening your ax here, um, will cut down an oak tree 
15 inches in diameter in about 100 to 107 chops. A professional lumberjack will do it in about 10. Well, the average is about 10.3. So if you take a look at that, how, how is a lumberjack taking down this tree where no more per person, me and you, will take 100, 107 chops, this guy can do it in 10, or girl, <laughs> they can do it in 10. So, so how do they do that? And it's because of a different way of thinking. Actually, when you study the lumberjack, they look at two or three different trees versus one. And meaning that they're actually trying to quickly chop one tree, which is a third of the tree. Then they chop the second tree in a couple, a couple two, three strokes. Uh, and they take wider, it's a technique issue and all sorts of things. And they can do it in, in seconds where it would take us five, <laughs> five, seven, 10 minutes. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. So these quantum leap theorems are absolutely in everything. And they're best improved when they're focused on a specific skill set after critical mass is reached, as we already talked about. So here's how the math works. And this is important too. This is the proof of why it works. Just don't listen to me about it and say, oh, Bardos has some great things to say. Look at the math and how the math changes. And I, I want to do the formula for you. Let's assume that 50% of the recruiting world, 50% uh, is based on getting the right candidate or getting a candidate that they're going to hire. And let's assume that 50% is based on getting a good search or, or job order. And, and I think everybody could agree that we can, that 50% of this game is recruiting and 50% is, uh, you know, marketing, getting searches. Yes, but you need to plan and you need sourcing and all the other BS. Those were all critical success factors. That's part of finding the right candidate and finding the right search. So let's assume that 50% of everything we do today is candidate, 50% is the search itself. All right. So that's the, we're just going forward with that. Now, if we improve just one ratio, and by the way, I'd spent the last three years taking over 400 companies from contingent search firms to engaged search firms or retained firms. The only thing I focused on, really, well, there's some cool little techniques I gave everybody was to, to get their firm there, was to improve this ratio, which was how many job orders they worked on to how many placements they made. And if they embarked in this and really studied and did well, they saw three to five time increase in billings just by changing the quality of search they did. Now I'm going to prove that out to you right here. Now, if they were currently at 12 to one, and by the way, the industry gets eight to 12 searches and work on them until they make one placement. That's where the 12 to one came from. They get eight to 12 searches and then finally make a placement. If you can take that down to 1.5 to one, meaning you work on 1.5 1 searches to one, um, and that's doable and that's realistic. If you take a great search and you take an engaged, mutually committed search, you're going to get it down to that ratio. So no longer do you have to waste 80% plus of your time working on crap. Just learn this technique. By the way, we teach this technique in all the different workshops that we have to offer. So, uh, there's many different options for you to look at, but if you just take it from 12 to one to 1 1.5 to one, you get an eight times increase in this specific job order. So 50% of your business, we're gonna increase it by eight times, which means if you did the math, you take half of that, which is 400%. Uh, so, so you can increase your billings times four. And what, remember what I said, three to five is what typically, typically two, and typically you'll increase your billings by four times just by changing this little ratio. And that's the power of quantum leap theorems. A quantum leap allows you to make a quantum leap without any really extra effort. It's a different technique or skill set. Something to know. Something to know well, by the way. So, so we talked about activity metrics, you know, and there's volume. How many calls I'm making, marketing calls, uh, recruiting calls I'm making, uh, you know, recruiting presence, all that stuff is, is certainly an activity metric. Result metrics is how many send outs, how many conversations I had, how many people returned my call. Those are all results metrics of what happened previously, okay? And the ratios are how good I am at everything I am doing. So instead of just focusing on activity, more activity, more activity, more activity, once you hit critical mass, you gotta focus on the ratios because then you can improve the quality of what you do and see immediate increase in your results, which are typically directly related to billings, directly related to billings. So in quantum leap theorems, you, you certainly focus on that. So if I have a new recruiter starting, and, and this is a whole point, below I want to make, I'd make sure that critical mass is taken care of. So I'm only going to focus on activities to get them to do activities because I know their quality is going to suck because they have no idea what they're doing, but that's cool. Nobody does when they first start in this business, but I need them have, I, I need to condition them to do this business. So I need them on the phone. I need them talking to people. I need to use the technology appropriately. Uh, I need things leading the conversations because only in conversations we have the ability to help affect a decision. 
the only time in, in a phone conversation or face-to-face -face conversation, email is very difficult to affect a decision, any kind of decision or sway a decision. So new people are focused on activity, but once they've hit critical mass, bingo, guess what? I focus on the ratios. So my tenured folks, what do I focus when some tenured folk gets on uh, analytics? I focus immediately on ratios. Quick story. 2011, I had my top recruiter come to me and say, hey, John, got a little problem. I said, what's going on? She said, you know what? I have two kids going to private colleges next year, and I need to double my income. I, and I, I thought, okay, here we go. This could be good news, I thought, or, or bad news, one of the two, but I was thinking positively. I said, well, Paul, um, I, I tell you what, I will not uh, double your commission dollars certainly by, uh, you know, just by doing the same thing, let's take a look at your analytics. So I took a look at her analytics and, and she was doing a great job. I mean, she is phenomenal at her, her recruiting skills, great at marketing. She had lots of searches coming in. And we realized that was crazy was this job order placement ratio. She typically did about 300,000 a year and she probably worked four days a week, guys. She probably worked four days a week. Anyways, long story short, we gave her three questions to ask before she would work on a search. And she did healthcare IT, so she worked very heavily on, you know, consulting firms trying to win gigs to install Epic software, McKesson, uh, uh, Centricity, GE Centricity, uh, you know, uh, Cerner Millennium, and all those things. But what happened was, if they bid on a search, they'd want to put the team together first. So she'd do a lot of work for nothing, and then they didn't win the search, and she did all the recruiting for nothing. So, anyways, we changed it down. But here's the bottom line. Not only did she double her commissions, she went from three to almost seven hundred thousand. And we saw the trend happen in 90 days by asking the right questions and taking the right searches. And she went from working four days a week to about three. This is the power of analytics. It'll allow you to make these monster increases virtually by doing very little, but focusing on the skill set change. So let's talk about what analytics, if you will, measure skill sets. Okay, what measures skill sets? First of all, you're researching and planning skills. Do you have a great call list? Uh, is it accurate? Are you making presentations? All that kind of stuff. So your research and planning skills, you know, it just tells you, can I plan? And, and the biggest problem we've got in most of the average recruiting industry is that they try to research and make calls at the same time. Uh, at the end of the day, they never hit critical mass because they never have volume on the go because they spend too much time between calls, researching, finding this, finding that. The solution to that problem, uh, just to solve something very quickly, uh, you know, take, take, to, take two aspirins and call me in the morning kind of thing, is plan before you get there. Plan in the morning before you start the calls. Plan after four o'clock, but do something so you have everything done. So you're making a call after call, email, and then follow up, obviously, with technology, but follow up afterwards because you'll never hit critical mass if folks try to do all those things all at once. Now, now what measures how good your value proposition is? Okay, this is real important, guys, because this is one of the quantum leap theorems, almost anything that you do. How do you get everybody to call you back? You know, when you leave that voicemail, hey, Fred, this is John Bartez with GPS. We're a national search firm that focuses on plastics. I got an opportunity, I thought of you. Give me a call back as soon as you can. I'm available between three and five. So, so if you're leaving those types of voicemails, you're probably somewhere in the 20 to one ratio of getting a call back. But the key is your value proposition. Why call me back opposed to every other opportunity they, they could do? What is the one reason they're gonna call me back no matter what? That's value proposition. You need one in marketing, you need one in recruiting to get callbacks and gain interest. If you're at 12 to one or 20 to one right now and you bring that down to two to one, you just increased your effectiveness by 10 times. 10 times by understanding how to articulate a value proposition. By the way, this is the problem with most salespeople throughout the world. No idea how to articulate a value proposition, but there's very specific techniques on how to do that. But any communication out and then the other, other side of the equation is people returning your message or returning your call or returning your email or whatever it is. That is the ratio that measures your skill set of articulating a value proposition, either recruiting, marketing, mass emailing, anything else. Okay, marketing skills. What measures your marketing skills? It's how many actually marketing conversations you have with a new client to how many searches you actually get. The good guys are two to one. Uh, the folks who are not doing real well are anywhere from 15 to 1 to 31. 
You know, so if you increase your ability for a marketing uh, presentation and your skill set, that goes through the roof and so do your searches. Your recruiting skills, what, what, what really goes over your, your recruiting skills? Well, it's your, it's your recruiting presentations where you're talking to a candidate live, presenting opportunities to how many candidates raise their hand and say, hey, John, that's, that's for me. Put me in the game. I'm interested. That measures your recruiting skills. Now, the quality of searches we talked about, it's how many searches you get and work on how many placements you make and that's a huge one as well and then your average fee Do you guys realize that the the world of executive retained search average fees 33 percent plus an eight percent admin fee guys you realize and i'm not a mathematician but that's 41 percent fee they're getting from that what are you guys getting what's your average fee from a percentage perspective there's no reason you can't get that as well it's just certainly articulating a value proposition of why and then negotiating a service agreement, all of that stuff. And this total fee is based on placements, obviously. And then your matching skills are important. And then that's one of uh, other critical skill sets to have, is how many people you submit to how many people they actually interview. Uh, then PDA is important. So, so let's take a look at these quantum leap theorems, if you will, all right? And, and the specific things you need to get great at, great, great at, in order to see these quantum leaps in billings and have your life change overnight. The first one is your zebra. And I'm gonna explain what that is. A, a zebra, believe it or not, is not about a zebra. It's really, well, it is in the end, but it's really about a lion. A book came out called Selling to Your Zebra by John and Chad Kozer, Jeff and Chad Kozer. And basically it said this, when lions are young, they try to chase everything from squirrels to snakes to, wildebeest, uh, heart of beast, all sorts of crazy stuff. But when a lion pride gets five years or older, they go after specifically the zebra herd. I know this is very graphic and I apologize for those folks out there. But so why, why do lions go after zebra herds if they're mature, meaning the lions are mature, not, the, not necessarily the zebras. It's because it has a greatest return for the energy spent going after that specific game. So how does that relate at all to what we do? Well, uh, if you look at the book, they said that 86% of the sales reps and recruiters in this world uh, focus on the wrong zebra. They spend all their time and effort chasing down, using resources, company resources, ads on career builder, monster, whatever it is, and wasting their time and effort never seeing results. Where if they just focus on their zebra, what they're the greatest at, what they're the best at, which has a best return for energy spent, they'll see the greatest return for their energy span. And, and again, your effectiveness increases from two to four times. Now, now this isn't 20%, this isn't 30%, it's not even 90%. This is you can increase your effectiveness with your accounts and your candidates uh, two to four times. Now, quick story in December, uh, I focused my entire organization and my partners, if you will, on uh, one industry. It was the auto ID industry going after value-added resellers. We just happened to have 32 sales reps because we were doing a, two national searches and putting people all over the darn place in every major city. We had these great candidates, so I went after every specific value-added reseller at the end of November. Guys, me and my partners placed over one candidate per day the month of December. One per day. That's all about the zebra. The right candidates, the right clients, increase in effectiveness is two to four times. Now this is a skill set and I have a workshop that works people, that will uh, walk people through this. Now, now your, any kind of message you, you leave, communication you send out to the response you get is your value proposition. I don't care if you're at a bar and you have a communication with the opposite sex, compare that to the response you get from that. <laughs> or if you're emailing your clients or potential prospects, and you get one out of 20 responses or one out of 100, whatever it is. But whatever that communication is, so the response you have in is the power of your value proposition. Most people are horrible uh, because they can't articulate one. Go from 21 to two to one, you increase your effectiveness 10 times. That's in marketing, that's in recruiting, that's on mass email programs, that's in anything that you do. Critical to understand how to have a strong, value proposition and to articulate it appropriately. Next one is your recruiting skills. Most people are 10 to one, five to one, 15 to one. You get down, down that to two to one, you increase your effectiveness five times. So, so as you can see, based on simple math, and these are, this is simple math guys that we're doing, you can increase your buildings not only two times, 
I've seen people increase their billing simply by changing a couple things times five, times five. Yeah, that's right. They were doing a hundred grand last year. They're doing 500,000 this year. And they really didn't change a whole lot except for one, one thing. One thing is all they changed. But all of these can be changed to see that. How about your marketing skills? You can increase it six times, 12 to one to two to one. So the whole point here I want to share with you, these quantum leap theorems will give you a monster increase without working any harder. Matter of fact, you'll probably work less. Patrick Sylvester goes to our Pinnacle meeting two years ago and talking to all the Pinnacle members, the top you know, 10% uh, recruiters, if you will, top 75 recruiters in North America. Great riveting uh, talk. Uh, Patrick, uh, president of Bannister International, billing anywhere from uh, three to five million year in, year in, year in, year in, year out. So he's one of the top billers and has been in the industry, um, certainly for the last 15 years. And at the end of the meeting, one of the Pinnacle members asked Patrick, he said, uh, hey, tell me how about how much phone time you do? How many calls are you making a day? How many marketing calls are you doing a day? Patrick's face turned all red and he didn't want to answer the question. Do you realize that Patrick Sylvester billing that kind of numbers works significantly less than most of the Pinnacle members did, which is the rest of the top 10%. That's what happened when you get great at these quantum leap ratios or principles. That's what happens. And obviously your average, your average fee by negotiating appropriately can go up as much as 50%. So uh, what will analytics do for you? Let's just talk about it. By you taking this and running with it, what will it do for you specifically? Guys, this is what changed my life. It really did. And I'll tell you why. When I got in the industry, the first thing I did is found the best coach in the world. And I found, uh, at the time, it was Pat Scopoletti, who was, who was currently coaching uh, Bob Bassman, who was KBIC, by the way. I know you guys know Jeff, but Bob Bassman started the firm, uh, K Bassman. Uh, and it was actually MRI Plano. And then uh, when Jeff joined, they changed it to K Bassman and KBIC. Anyways, long story short, uh, the same coach that coached Bob Bassman to help bring people on board, MRI Portland, uh, Mike Janta, by the way, same coach uh, he used, I got. So when I first got in the business, I spent the money on a coach to help me get as great as I possibly could because I wanted to understand this business better than anybody. And if you guys know my background, uh, not only did I have I, I built and sold numerous companies, I've done this with two recruiting firms, but I also billed my first year 750, 1.4 the second year, and then over 10 years in a row, well over a million dollars. I'm less than 20 years in this business still, not much less than 20, but I've already billed over 17.5 million myself. I'm not saying that to brag. The reason, only reason I got there, number one, I had a great coach. Two, I understand the game of recruiting very, very well, inside and out. And I'm a student, I am a student of this game. If you're an owner and manager and you institute these analytics, you're gonna know exactly where your team is, their strengths, their weaknesses, but you'll also pinpoint developmental issues to make immediate impact on your team. Instead of, you know, row harder. You know, I wanna, I wanna get faster across the ocean, row harder, the beatings will continue. Instead of focusing on activities, which could still be a problem if they're not hit critical mass, you focus on the quantum leap theorems and, and the really things they need help. And, and the big change that happens is when you switch from a manager, oh, here he comes. He's going to tell me I didn't make enough calls the other day to a coach. Hey, Fred, great job. You just brought your job order to placement ratio down from nine to one. You're down to six to one. All we have to do is improve that to get to three to one. And then you also double your revenue again. Keep up the great. So, so you really become a coach and you start coaching in the industry. And it will create a culture of performance in your office. So once somebody institutes this, it, it, the accountability changes. And this is what I love about managers who take this all over the world and, and institute it in their organization and big billers themselves. They become accountable for their own performance. At the end of the month, I remember when I started in this business, I started hiring a bunch of people and I got up to you know, 20, 25 people. At the end of the month, last day of the month, I'm still working hard because we didn't hit our numbers. Everybody else left and went to the bar. And until I instituted and got that culture of performance, that continue. Do you want accountability to change so people will be accountable for their own performance? I'm talking to the managers out there and the owners. This is a way to do it. Right here is a way to do it. Okay, so, so if I'm a big biller now, um, why, or, or even a biller, why would I do this? Well, number one, if I'm brand new, you'll come up to speed fast because you'll understand the game. You understand exactly. So you'll, you'll get hit critical mass, then you'll focus on the quality of what you do, and you'll be faster up to speed than anybody's been in the industry. The tenured folks can make small tweaks to the quantum leap theorems or ratios and see big increases in their billings. 
and the big monster billings, the billers like Patrick Sylvester and, and all the folks at KBIC down there who bill a million dollars plus and the Pinnacle members, they get on it, they will become bigger billers because they will tweak the small things that give them the huge increases in revenue. Also, the average increase will be two to 10 times. That's what we're, we're kind of seeing. So, so if I'm you, okay, I am you, you're listening to this webinar right now thinking, John, but I'm, I'm here in Des Moines, Iowa, and I'm not picking on Des Moines, Iowa, by, by the way, but I'm here in Des Moines, Iowa. What do I do? What can I do specifically to help me get where I need to go? Number one, everybody should get on immediately using and, and, and measuring analytics. By the way, if you look at the bottom, I've got great certified coaches who are certified uh, that I certified over the last two years, and a lot of them last week, by the way, coaches who are certified on how to help you and coach you through the numbers. So if you have a favorite coach down there, Jordan Rayboy, uh, Jim Josick, Jeremy Sizemore, Janta, Dorshing, Bob Marshall, they all have use of the RPM dashboard and put their people on it because that's the only way they can tell how things are going. How's the engine running? Well, I really don't know. Oh, we're out of oil. You don't know unless you're measuring that stuff. So it allows them to measure that. So right now, start using and measuring analytics, all the things that are necessary. Two, Make sure you hit your critical mass volume numbers quickly because nothing will happen until a critical mass is there. Focus on the QLTs one at a time. And in the order I would focus on, by the way, and this is real important because yesterday on my uh, webinar, Making It Rain, we didn't talk about this at all. But there's, you can't do all things at once. The key to success in this business is take one thing that you need to improve on, and the most important thing, hopefully, and hit it and knock it and do it. And until you've hit that specific thing, move on to the next one. Then once you've hit zebra, then move on to the job order to placement ratio. Then once you've done that really, really well, then go to the marketing presentation, the job order ratio and, and focus on your marketing skills. There's a system uh, of the madness to help you improve one step at a time. And if I tell you what, get in with a great coaching program to help you achieve even faster. My greatest success, now I don't know if I told you guys this, but uh, I started the Rengate Farm I bought the Redgate farm a couple of years ago and I saw the potential to make it a vineyard. So I got a hold of the best coach uh, consultant in the industry, uh, Piero Spada. And I've worked with him now for the last two years in putting together the Redgate farm and vineyard, which actually opens June 2nd of this year. Uh, that's good news. Uh, bad news is uh, last weekend I put in 160 more uh, poles, six by eight poles. And uh, I got to put 800 to a thousand great plants in this Saturday. Yeah, I would love to tell you that I got a bunch of people doing it for me, but th that's not the case. I grew up a farmer in Michigan, so it's kind of cool for me to do this. It just hurts now when you're old. You know, I'm like on a Motrin high now from last weekend. There's so much Motrin I've been trying to take. But I got a coach specifically because I wasn't comfortable in that specific area. I needed to pick the right grapes. I had to test my soil. I had to make sure the trellis system is going in right. I had to make sure that I was doing right. And then last year, I, I had uh, an infestation of these Japanese beetles eating my grape plants up. And I'm going, oh, you got to be kidding me. Hey, if you have an infestation of, of Japanese beetles in your recruiting business, whatever area it is, you need to get a coach to help you get out of there. You'll get over a 600% return in any coaching that you get specifically from some of the best coaches in the industry. You will. So, so if you need it, get it. It's, it's less expensive than you think. And there's only one tool, ladies and gentlemen, that measure everything we talked about today. It measures your zebra. It measures your, your, all your quantum leap uh, theorems. And it's the RPM dashboard. I've had it out since 2008, which has created million dollar producers worldwide. And it's cheap. It's virtually inexpensive to get on. It measures all activities. It helps set goals and calculate metrics. Gives you a series of weekly dashboard views. And it gives written and video based training on those areas that you're not doing well. So, so the whole thing that you're taking a look at, it not only pinpoints what potential problems are going on, it gives you training and development, video-based training development for the things you need help on. And it's almost the system you need to help you make the change you need to go through. And I just have a couple screens to show you some of the screens on the RPM dashboard. But it's, it's a, obviously a data analytics package for individual performers, for teams specifically. Uh, at the bottom there, you see bottom square right in the center. That's all your quantum leap theorems, uh, your marketing presentations, how good you are at recruiting, how good you, your searches are, how good your matching skills, all of those things. And it gives you trend lines and say, are you getting better? Are you getting worse? Are you trending in the right way? You're not trending in the right way. And it also gives you training development. Not only do we have training development hooked into the RPM system, 
but you can also hook the next level exchange if you have a next level exchange membership. And uh, it's not, we, it doesn't stop there. Guess what? It also is mobile. So now you can use Android or an iPhone to get on, input your data, and do anything you really want to do. Now we made it simple. So we have RPM coaches all over the place to help you input your data from your ATS system. You can manually input it, whatever is most accurate. It really doesn't matter, but it's simple to use. Takes less than two minutes on a weekly basis to use. And then you'll have the data you need. So here, here's an offer we've got for you, for you being on this webinar today. And then I'll, I'll answer questions just a second. So get your questions ready to go. And I'll, I'll be uh, jumping on those just a second. Here it is, number one. The deal we got for you is you're going to get 50% off the RPM dashboard. So if you're an individual user today, I'm going to take off the $199 setup fee. And for $359, uh, you're going to get the RPM dashboard, which means you're going to get this. You're going to get a, a free monthly coaching call. By the way, there's coaches that charge $200 a month for exactly what you're going to get for $29. You're going to get the free monthly coaching call, which is the last Tuesday of every month on the RPM dashboard. And then you're going to get all communications that come and all, if you go in the library section of the RPM dashboard, there's articles, there's videos, how to be a million dollar producer, there's interviews, there, there's forums, there's all sorts of craziness that's going on there. Our goal is to give this to you very, very inexpensively because it is the only tool that'll take you where you potential, what your potential is and what it could be. And once you're on it for 30, 60 days, uh, the aha moment happens. And I love it when I, when I see somebody's face and hear it in their voice. The aha moment is when you finally realize what the hell you're doing wrong and had no clue you were doing wrong because nobody ever showed you the numbers. And it happens with everybody. You have no idea what your real numbers are unless you're tracking these things. But once you start doing that and start looking at it and compare yourself to everybody else in the industry, look out. You'll have the ability to create some miracles. So um, by the way, if you join one of our clubs, like Summit Club is a big biller club. And that's a, a, a coaching group coaching session every month. And uh, today that's 99 bucks a month. But for 99 bucks a month, you've got the Big Biller Summit Club. You get the RPM for free. You get all sorts of stuff. I mean, so there's a lot of packages we have. You get 50% off today on all coaching packages. So if you want to do session, five sessions, 10 sessions, you'll get a ton of money off that. And then if I can encourage you to do anything, it would be getting it uh, not only one, it's mandatory, everybody gets on an RPM dashboard so we can help you be successful and you can help yourself be successful, but go to the Making It Rain Seminar Workshop. It's at the Redgate Adventures and we allow you to go there for three days where we work on every single one of the quantum leap theorems, those ratios that make a major impact in your billings. Now we have a session coming up in June, June 4th through 6th and one October 4th through 6th as well. Our standard price, if you go to the website, is five grand to go on that thing. But because you're on this webinar today, you're going to get it for $27.99, uh, either October or June. You can pick whatever one you want to go to. But you will walk away from making it rain. Not only are we meeting up phenomenal people, having a time of your life, because you'll go to the Redgate Farm and Vineyard, hayrides, barbecues, and craziness going on uh, after hours. But you'll also learn your techniques in every single one of these. And our goal will be not to double your revenue. We want to see your revenue increase five times when you walk away from that workshop making it rain and you know what it's it's pennies to pay for the kind of volume you're going to get back on that kind of stuff now take a look at the uh tiny url at the bottom so www.https tinyurl.com forward slash passion for performance and that's the one to go to to get information back do do all the different crazy things that you want to do and then, uh, and then rock and roll. So, so this is a great deal for you guys to do. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this, if you don't have the money, I got it, things are tough. Kids need new shoes. Wife needs some more makeup. Uh, gym, pay, gym payment is due. I got it, not a big deal. If you just follow Passion for Performance, we're gonna give you lots of deals, smaller deals, freebies. You're gonna get on our mailing list so you get free white papers and all sorts of things. The RPM dashboard is pretty important for you to get on, but more importantly, get on the monthly coaching call at the end of the month because we go over all of this stuff as we go on through here. I mean, it's real, real important to, to jump on this stuff. Uh, yeah, so, so real quick, um, let's, let's, let's kind of recap a little bit. So number one, um, let's focus, if you can, on taking a look at the analytics and what they can do to help you be successful. Um, you have unlimited potential, by the way, uh, to um, 
achieve anything in life you want to achieve. Um, I, I know people in the recruiting industry that fly a Learjet around the world on the weekends because they do so well in this industry. Um, I have had the opportunity to buy uh, multiple companies. Uh, guys, uh, four years ago, five years ago now, me and, me and about four other people started a rehab facility in Cincinnati. It's called theridgeohio.com. We put our money together. We saw this big problem going on with uh, methamphetamines. And, and one of the things, you know, my, my joke to everybody was, you know, as I start the rehab facility, there's some place for me to go in five years, you know, and I've had too much Jameson or, or whatever it was. As a joke, obviously. Guys, we've now seen over 10,000 patients. We bought Jeff Weiler's ranch in Cincinnati, 50-acre uh, ranch, big old house. We put an inpatient facility there. Uh, we had the opportunity to, to see 100 people a day in our outpatient facility in, in Batavia. Um, I would never have the ability to do anything like that, to change and be significant in life without this recruiting industry and without doing the right things uh, that I need to. I could never buy a monster farm and start a vineyard uh, and, and just have the time of my life. I just got the wedding barn done, wedding start in June. Uh, I still got to do all the planting and all that kind of, I grew up a farmer, so that stuff's kind of normal to me, but, but I would never have the ability to just do the things. I've got a beautiful ranch in Colorado now, you know, it's surrounded by mountains. Uh, so it, it, your life can be anything you want it to be if you do the things you need to do appropriately and you can impact life. Now, there's one book I want to share with you before you leave, and it's called Bob Buford's Halftime. And this is probably what means the most to me out of anything. Bob Buford said you spend half your life being successful. And unfortunately, more, than, more people spend more than half their life. They typically spend three quarters of their life trying to make money to be successful. And then eventually, they, they try to be significant. Bob Buford, by the way, sold Comcast uh, in Dallas. And then he went on to bi build monster churches within the Dallas area. But the whole premise of the book is this. You spend half your life trying to be successful, and then the other half trying to be significant and impact life that needs to be impacted. Uh, guys, there's lots of help that's needed out there. I mean, there's a homeless issue. There's a major drug problem happening out there. The children in schools, uh, our educational system, uh, you, you could throw a dart at a wall and hit a problem in society right now that needs your help and needs your time to spend uh, to help it. My goal through this seminar is to help you be super successful, super fast. So quicker, you can get on to being significant in your life and doing the things to impact others and, and live forever. I think, I think Ben Franklin said, if you want to you know, be famous to eternity, do something worth being written about or write something worth reading. And if we can do anything here to help you, it would certainly be help you be successful super fast so you can go on in life to be significant in whatever area that you choose to do that. Guys, recruiting can get you there. It's one of the greatest fields in the world. I don't care if you're new or 30 years in this business, get the passion back for this industry. You help companies overnight, number one. Number two, you change a candidate's life overnight. And also you can make what you're worth in this business if you do it right. My only goal, help you reach your potential fast so that you can get your journey to significance on the go. So. I'm, I'm going to let you guys go here. I appreciate everything. And uh, I will have at the end of this video, probably by tomorrow, you get a copy of these slides, a uh, PDF of the slides. Number two, I'll give you a recording of what we talked about today. But I'm also going to get these special deals to you so you can get on here for next to nothing to get these things taken care of so you can be on your path to success, reaching your potential, so then you can be on the path to significance in your life. I'm John Bartos. You need to get a hold of me. There's my email. Uh, let me go to the next page. There's my email. I got to get this off my uh, page here. All the questions. It'll turn eventually. There it is. So if you need to get a hold of me, it's uh, John, J-O-N, at rpm-usa.com. That's the bat phone, by the way. My cell phone number, 513-515-1267. If I don't answer, that means probably on the phone. Uh, with somebody else, but, but please leave me a message. And uh, there is the offer down there, today only, right there. Take those offers, run with them, get on our mailing list, get on the RPM call, get on the Summit Club if you can. If you can make it to Making It Rain or take your entire firm there, uh, I will do everything I can to help you get it there, to help you on your path to significance. Guys, not only have a phenomenal day today, I want to see you guys kicking butt, taking names, 2018. Thanks.